Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be providing an update to the Fear and Greed Index. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. The Fear and Greed Index is a pretty popular metric in the Cryptoverse. You can track it actually at this website here. I will link it in the description below. But essentially it shows you, it gives you a gauge of what the fear and greed index is. And you can see today it's at 74, which is considered greed. Yesterday it was at 79, extreme greed. Last week, greed. Last month, neutral at 52. And you can actually scroll down to the bottom here and see how it changes uh, through the years going all the way back to 2018. And, and if you want to get even more information on the fear and greed index, you can scroll down and see exactly how they come up with it. One of the interesting things about the fear and greed index is that it does really capture how we swing from one extreme to the other, right? And, and, and how as the cycles go on, we go from extreme fear to extreme greed and back and forth and back and forth. And it seems like whenever we're at one extreme, it seems like we'll never go back to the other extreme. And then when we get to that extreme, it seems like we'll never go back to the other one. But history shows that there is certainly an ebb and flow to the fear and greed index. And you can see really the fear and greed index has been putting in higher lows really since June of 2022, right? It's been putting in higher lows and higher highs. So we talked about the fear and greed index a few weeks ago. We, we mentioned this higher low and higher high structure. And one of the reasons I'm providing an update on it now is because we did put in another higher low, but more importantly, it put in a higher high. So it has finally moved into that 79 level. If you look at this, you know, this area over here from basically October through January, the highest it went was around 76 or so. So now we've gone to a higher level on the fear and greed index as Bitcoin has finally broken above that 50K threshold. So one reason I want to talk about this is to look historically at the fear and greed index to get an idea of, of possible outcomes, right? Now, unfortunately, with the fear and greed index, it doesn't really go back that far. It only goes back to, you know, early 2018. So we can't really look to see what it was doing, you know, back in 2016, 2017. But with the data that we have, we can see that there have been two prior trends here, two prior, I mean, if you look at the 2019 bull market, the 2020, late 2020, early 2021 bull market, what you'll notice is that in both of them, the fear and greed index went into the 90s. Right now, again, right now we're at 74. Yesterday we hit 79. Last two bull markets, one led to new highs, one did not. Both of them, fear and greed index went into the 90s. Be that as it may, one of them stayed in the 90s for a long time, one of them did not. So if you look closely here, 2021, we went into the 90s in late November and then stayed in the, in the 90s for a long time. We even dipped back down some when we had these sell-offs, but I mean, we stayed back up right in the 90s for several months. And then ultimately we finally came back down to earth where the fear and greed index went back down to like 10 or something, um, you know, in the summer of 2021, the summer lull, which, you know, was pretty, I mean, it was, it was highly anticipated, right? That summer we would go down and, and sort of cool off for a while and we did. But you can see that, you know, had you sold all of your Bitcoin the first time it hit 90, you would have, you know, the fear and greed index hit 90, you would have sold at, at 16K. Now, of course, back then, when you're watching the price go up, it's easy, you know, it's easy to look at it now and say that was a, a silly decision, right? When you look at it, when it hit 90, you have to imagine a lot of people that just saw the price at, at, at $3,800, $3, you know, just a half year before or so. We're probably quite, you know, really relatively ecstatic to see it up at 18K, right? And you're talking about a, you know, a four and a half X move in less than a year by Bitcoin. And that was one of the reasons why the Fear and Greed Index was in the 90s. But it stayed there for a while as Bitcoin continued to climb. This was also during, you know, low interest rates, quantitative easing. We have another example over here, 2019, where the Fear and Greed Index was putting in sort of like marginally higher highs, right? I mean, it went up to... 69 and then it went up to 71 and then it went up to 77 or 78 and then ultimately it topped out at 95. Now in this case 
had you sold some Bitcoin when it went into the 90s, it would have worked out quite well, right? I mean, there, you would have had no way of knowing that that, that that was actually the top, right, when it went to the fear and greed index of 95. And, you know, unfortunately, if, if when you saw it go to 95 back over here in 2021, if you had used that as a reason to, you know, completely exit your position, you would have missed out on, on a, a continued move by Bitcoin. But, I mean, I do think each of these bull markets, uh, whether it was a 20, late 2020, early 2021 bull market or the 2019 bull market, which did not lead to a new high, in, in, bo in both cases, we saw the fear and greed index go into the 90s. And in one case, we put a new all-time high. In the other case, we did not. One was during a period of lower rates and QE, 2020, 2021. And then the 2019 one was during a period of QT and higher interest rates. Okay. So, I mean, again, you can compare either one uh, if you want to, but I still think that in terms of, in terms of like market structure, market dynamics, what was going on at the time, 2019 to me still seems like, you know, a candidate, uh, you know, one to, to pay attention to. Um, and that's not to say it has to play out in the exact same way, but if you look at, at certain trends in the cryptoverse, you know, now compared to, to back then, it certainly seems like it's a similar type of move. And we've talked a lot about that, um, you know, one of which is just looking at, at interest rates and, and seeing like, you know, this move over here was during a period of rising rates and then holding steady, right? That's when it, that's when it occurred. Similar thing over here, right? Rising rates and then holding steady. This move over here was during a period of lower rates and holding steady, right? So two completely different types of, of, of bull markets, right? One during QT, 2019, and then one during QE, late 2020, early 2021. Two very different types. Additionally, in one of these in, in one of these bull markets, ETH Bitcoin was leading the charge. So like the ETH Bitcoin valuation was going up, and in one of them, the ETH Bitcoin valuation was going down. And I mean, if you've watched this channel at all, I'm sure you are aware of which is which, but um, you can see that in, in, in the QT bull market, ETH Bitcoin was going down. In the QE bull market, ETH Bitcoin was going up, right? Here, we have a Q, it's QT, right? We've been in a QT bull market, but ETH Bitcoin has been going down. So again, that's that's some of the reasons why I, I prefer to compare it to 2019 is because Bitcoin is really leading the charge here, right? I mean, over here, during this major move, altcoins are really taken off. And, and I know a lot of people are, are constantly promising you guys alt season and whatnot, and, and they're calling for the Bitcoin dominance to collapse. But that's really not what happened in 2019. I, I think a lot of people are, are just blindly looking at what happened in 2021 to sort of forecast what will happen you know, to the altcoin market in 2024. But remember, in 2021, Bitcoin, it was during lower rates in QE. And also, also Bitcoin was setting new highs. Now, if Bitcoin sets new highs, that could potentially change the, um, change the dynamic. But until that happens, I, I, I still think that at least in the phase of the cycle we're in right now, it, it, it's sort of like this Bitcoin dominance up cycle, um, Bitcoin dominance up market. And so when you look at the fear and greed index, and we try to identify, is it more like this one or is it more like this one? I would lean towards saying it's more like 2019. However, there's a caveat to that. And the caveat is that we don't have the fear and greed index for 2015, 2016, 2017, right? And, you know, there's been a lot of people that have, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a valid way to look at the market, right? There's a lot of people that are comparing, you know, this market over here to this one over here. If, it, if, if we want to continue to make that comparison, though, I mean, you can see that this one over here actually had pullbacks where it retested those prior breakout points. We haven't actually had that yet. And so that comparison could be thrown out the window if, if, if something like that were not to, to happen. So my guess is that it will play out in a different way than both 2021 and 2019. I think by looking at both cases, 
you can understand how you might want to manage your risk. For instance, if we do see the fear and greed index print in the 90s, which again, it hasn't happened yet. It's gone up to 79. If we see it print in the 90s, like 2019 did, that could be a, an important signal to not ignore. On the other hand, if it prints in the 90s and then just continues up like 2021, you may be remiss to completely part with your entire Bitcoin position, um, you know, in 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 such a in such a trend. So there's different ways that you can manage that. I mean, of course, there's we talk about risk management a lot. My sort of my main views for a couple of years now, almost two and a half years, has been a, a Bitcoin heavy crypto portfolio over an altcoin heavy portfolio. And the reason I've I've made fairly clear is because I think, I mean, I think that we're still in a phase where Bitcoin is absorbing all this liquidity from the altcoin market rather than the other way around, right? Like a lot of people think all this liquidity from Bitcoin is flowing to alts, but I, I continue to say, I don't think that's true. I think altcoin liquidity is flowing back to Bitcoin. And so a lot of people are, are still, they're still looking at these altcoins and say, well, when are they going to pump against Bitcoin? And, and then Bitcoin just keeps on, on sucking that liquidity right back. Very similar to 2019, right? Very, very similar to 2019. And also very similar to parts of, of 2021. I mean, if you look at, at this move over here, 2021, late 2020, early 2021, Bitcoin dominance was also going up, but it wasn't in sort of the same macro structure that it's been in, um, you know, basically since this, this uptrend began. And I, that's why I think it makes... It, it, it resembles the 2019 style move over the 2021 style move. If you actually look at how much Bitcoin went up over here, I mean, it went up 342%. We are already up 234%. In fact, a 340% move, which again, there are diminishing volatility from one cycle to another, but 342% move, just to give you an idea of how crazy it was back then, would basically put you at the prior highs. Now, again, you get diminishing volatility from one cycle to another. Like this move here from the bottom to this high was about 11,000% move. This one here was um, a modest 2,000% move. So it's not exactly um, comparing the same thing, but you get you certainly get the idea, right? So I, I think that the fear and greed index is a useful metric. Um, I, I think that you cannot take it to the bank in terms of if it prints a 90, does that definitively mean that it's the top? No. 2021 shows us that, right? It shows us that. 2019, though, would say, hey, if it's the 90s, you should you should really consider being cautious. Because at that point, um, that that essentially marks the, the high. If you look closely, though, what you'll notice is that in 2019, even if you did not take any profits when it hit 95, Bitcoin still came back down and then went back up and put in a double top where the, the fear and greed index put in a lower high, right? So you had a, a, a lower high in price and then a lower high on the fear and greed index. And then you had another lower high here in, in, you know, in August of 2019, which was a very different structure from 2020, late 2020 and 2021, where after basically hanging out in the extreme greed area for a month, we came back down and then went right back up to it. So, my guess is that you know you'll, you you can you can watch the structure of the fear and greed index and see if it if it's continuing to put in higher lows or if it breaks a low, or if it's unable to put in a new high. We just put in a new high yesterday. Again, given where Bitcoin price is, there's a decent probability that the fear and greed index will continue to climb. And one way to to sort of visualize this stuff is to take a a, a moving average, right? say like a 30 day EMA, and in, by looking at it like this it helps to tune out some of the noise, right? I mean, here you can see that the 30-day the 30, the 30 EMA of it went into the into the low 70s. So far, we are at 65, although over here we went into the about 70, 71. So back in 2019, we, we did go a little bit higher. In 2021, we went all the way up into the 90s for the 30-day EMA of the Fear and Green Index. And I also think it's worthwhile to view it like this as well, color-coded version, right? So you can see where the extreme fear was Another interesting thing is that Bitcoin price put in a lower low in November of 2022 compared to June, 
but the fear and greed index put in a higher low. So some form of divergence. So maybe that's something to look for, right? Maybe maybe that we get an example where Bitcoin at some point puts in a, you know, it puts in a lower high and the fear and greed index puts in a higher high. Um, and it sort of reverses what it did over here. But in the meantime, Bitcoin, uh, I mean, it just went to 52K. Fear and greed index is at 79 as of yesterday. We'll, we'll see where it comes in uh, later today. If we look at this, you can see the next update is, is going to come in in about four hours from at least the time that I'm recording this video. So let's see where it comes in. In the 90s, it starts to send off um, some, some warning, warning signals. I mean, really, I mean, in anything in greed or extreme greed is, it, you know, merits some caution. But with Bitcoin, I mean, you know, it, it can spend a lot of time, right, in, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. If you go into the 90s, you know, the clock really does start to tick before, you know, before there is a, a, a larger pullback. Right now, we're at 74. Yesterday was 79. We'll see where it comes in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.